there guys we are in the sweltering heat today i think it's about 33 degrees something like that so i'm in one of my favorite spots let's see what we can find today okay straight in with the finds and i don't think we've had one of these up before and when i say we i mean us together can you see it it's right here now this is a corset hook also known as a busk and sometimes these were engraved either with a brand name or they might even be inscribed with initials from a lover or have a little detail on is a lovely corset hook Just spotted this huge piece vessel that looks salt glazed to me, and you can see it's been on a wheel. That's quite a nice chunky piece. Quite a large shard here. Let's see what it turns up. Oh. Ah, it's got some writing on it. There we are. We're in the brick zone once again and I've found something that I'm going to take home because of its novelty value. It's the imprint of a brick frog. So the bit inside the brick, it stuck the bricks together and it's left an imprint which I really like so I'm going to take that home. Transfer printed, 18th, 19th century, and this little piece of Staffordshire slipware, which I will keep. There's a kiln mark on there. I picked up this piece of slipware, this comb slipware, so you can see underneath the slip that goes on before it's glazed so you can get a kind of an idea of what it looked like there and then that's the slip this cream beige and brown and then there's the glaze over the top and this has a pie crust edge which is fantastic look at that edge which has been crimped so that will come home with me I'm right down on the edge of the shore, on the edge of the water, and I'm waiting for this tide to recede. Because under that water there is where I want to be. Now there's lots of tourists around, and there's just me and this other mudlark down here, and I think they genuinely think we're doing for our dinner, as in we're trying to find things to sell. Uh, obviously, mudlarks don't have to do that now. They did have to do that in Victorian times um, and before, no doubt. They were digging and searching, scouring the foreshore 
for anything they could find to sell on just to make some money. Um, we don't have to do that. This is a leisure activity, it's a fast time, a hobby. We're, we're very charmed in that way. Anyway, there's people looking down. I'm sure they were taking photos and thinking, oh, there's four urchins. Nice chunks of marble. There is another mother. His name is Ed. His surname escapes me right now. I'll put a link up on the screen to him. He paints uh, rather lovely technical drawings of London on these big pieces of marble he finds. So there you go. Check out his work. For all you insulator fans out there, here we go. It might just be a bit too heavy for me to take home. We have a little pin twist, so hopefully that's a good sign. But there might be some other bits around. That's a really chunky pin twist. And we have a theory that these, these loops were used to hold all the pins. You know, the handmade pins that we find down here. And you buy them in bundles. Of Just notice poking out here is some leather. Now, oh, <laughs> that could be the shortest love mystery in all of history. Well, there we are. That's it, just this little leather bit. I was thinking that was the tip of the shoe. Mystery solved. Now that is a Tudor book. People use them now to build, they use reclamation bricks. This is the real deal. I'll leave this here for someone else to find as I have a few of them at home. And what is this I see before me? An Uber boat. Since when did that happen? I just found down here a little air gun pellet. Or a little air rifle pellet. So some naughty person's been firing an air rifle somewhere and it's ended up here. It's a bit of a day to chew the bricks. I've just yanked another one out. What's in that hole there? Here it is. As a consequence of the lack of local stone and an increasing shortage of good timber, brickmaking underwent a revival in England in the late 13th and early 14th centuries. Brickwork was already used extensively in the rest of Europe and we were playing catch up. By the Tudor period, 1485 to 1603, broadly comprised as early Tudor and Elizabethan, brickmakers and bricklayers had emerged as separate craftsmen, competent enough to rival the work of masons. From its unsophisticated roots, brick building entered its heyday, rivaling stone in its popularity as a structural material. Master bricklayer and author Gerard Lynch writes, Tudor bricks were irregular in size and shape, and thick mortar joints were necessary to even these out. They were generally made on site in wood, heather or turf-fired clamps by itinerant workers. Not only were standard bricks produced, but also many extravagant and elaborate shapes, epitomised by those that formed the spiral twisted chimney stacks for which the period is renowned. With the building of Hampton Court Palace, we have both the seal of royal approval and a monument to the achievement of brick in this period. 
And there's a big chunk here of Metropolitan slipwear. Make out the slipwear pattern on there. This is one of my favourite kinds of slipwear. I'm going to leave it here, it's a little bit faded, but someone else might want it. And I found this little key which is pretty knackered, but it's quite sweet. I think when I get that home and clean it up, that could be rather pretty there. Digging through here, and I'm going to spare you the digging sound because I know it annoys at least one of you. I found this little incomplete bar brooch. I love finding these. Sometimes you find patterned ones, um, stripy patterns and floral kind of patterns. This is early 20th century. Poking out of the surface here, is what looks like a Roman tessera. People are very quick to say these are Roman tessera. I'm not convinced, I'm not, I'm not easy with just saying yes that definitely is Roman because look, the edges on this just look way too sharp and it looks a bit bigger than usual but as ever, I will do a bit of research when I get home and uh, you'll find out what it is in just a minute. So, is this a piece of Romano British Tessera? As it's an individual piece, without mortar or in a cluster, and without dating the fabric, I can't say for sure. However, I did find this piece in a place that has and does turn up genuine Roman mosaic tiles. So, it definitely could be Roman. I'll leave the final decision to you. Well, that is cute. I don't often find these here. A little mother of pearl shell button. Very worn, but that's got some nice age to it buttons have been made from shells for hundreds of years but this is most likely 18th 19th century and you can see that where the, where the holes are it's a borehole shell button and they've just been worn through it's very cute and now you can see the poor shore has totally changed again so you've got these big lumps of rock and mud and objects eroding out of the mud which is where we find our treasures Another old mooring. I often get tempted to stop and look here because there's so much metal. But when you look more closely, it tends to mostly be modern metal. So it's a bit of a red herring, I think, to stop here. Well, there you go. There is a nice piece of pottery. Stoneware. And it's hand painted. That's very pretty. See all these teasing little round coin-like objects? They're all modern nail heads and machinery bits good sign, a washer, the right size and weight, but I'd be very surprised if it wasn't something modern that turned up. Ah, well, having said that, something has turned up. You might recognise this from one of my earlier videos. There we go. It's an annular brooch buckle. Post-medieval most likely. Could be medieval, but more likely post-medieval. I've got a few of these already, but they're always very nice when they turn up. So there we go. 
you never know. I do dismiss this as the modern area, but sometimes you do get one of these. All right, I'm gonna give you a few seconds to see if you can spot the find. It's central. I'm gonna start zooming in. Okay, you can probably see it now. Here it is. Let's wiggle it out. Fairly wedged in there, so maybe more of it than I think. Oh, here comes the tide. There we go. I get it. <laughs> it's coming right in now. There we go. It's a little piece of Bartman face. That is his mouth and beard. It's a little piece of face of the Bartman jar. Little tip about bones, the darker they are, the older they are. This area of the Thames, which incidentally it is my favourite area, is quite a late developer in terms of it being an affluent area. It's known for drinking and wenching, bear baiting, and all sorts of illicit pastimes. Right guys, I've laid all my ceramic finds out on the beach because I'm going on this bit of a ceramic journey and it seems you're coming with me. I've historically just concentrated on, mainly, on metal coins, tokens, dress accessories, that kind of thing. But I'm getting more and more into ceramics. So, I didn't film me finding this handle, I just found it now at last knockings. Um, it is a lovely jug handle. It looks like it's Surrey Whiteware, which would be medieval. So that's pretty cool there. And okay, so you're with me when we found this. And that is the bottom of a Bartman face. I picked this up and wanted to show you these patterns here are made by the potter pressing his thumb. So this is the potter's fingerprints, thumbprints here, making this decoration. And that's why I picked that one up. This one here, it's got some lovely decoration under the glaze. You can see on the wheel where it's been turned, they've obviously scored it or dragged something along when they were 
making this bowl or whatever it is, but that's a green glazed red ware. This, I'm not sure, I just love the patina on it. I'll stick some info up on the screen now because when I get home, obviously, I'll find more out. And I wanted to show you again this half a base of a vessel. And you can see in here where the pot has been created, been thrown on a wheel. So that's what those markings are there, where it's been spinning around and it's been manipulated into this vessel. Again here, I just picked up this half a base of a stoneware jar or bottle, um, just to show you, you can see the potter's marks again there on the wheel, it's been turned and that's stoneware. And now I picked up this piece of sugar cone mould. I know it's a piece of sugar cone mould because of this strange kind of slip inside. So I thought I'd let you have a look at that. It's got a grey core where it's been fired. And then I'm just going to put some stuff up on the screen about sugar cone moulds because they're pretty interesting. I don't know if you can tell, but I am utterly done in. It has been a real scorcher out here. It's been lovely, but so hot. And thank you for coming along the journey with me. So stay tuned. I'll be back soon. And thanks as ever for watching. And if you're not subscribed, please do, because that means the world to me. And join me on more of my adventures out on the foreshore. All right. Well, until next time.